So recently I stopped being vegan and it was because I was having issues with my gut uh, in the form of constipation, gas, bloating, and then on top of that, brain fog and sort of depression and stuff just from feeling terrible. So um, I did a SIBO test and I got a positive result for methane dominant SIBO, which correlates with the symptoms. And because of that, I've ordered oregano oil and berberine. Obviously, I understand the diet part as well that I need to implement. But I've been getting some bad stomach pain and acid reflux and sort of a regurgitation of the taste of the oregano. So I think that could be a problem for me. Just wondered your thoughts on that. What are the best supplements to take for methane dominant SIBO? Because I hear it's kind of a different approach and it can be more difficult to get rid of. And my final question on top of that would be, is there a risk that this will just make everything worse because it's going to attack the good bacteria and it may, I don't know, go into the large intestine and just further add to the problem? It seems very complicated. So I'd appreciate your thoughts based on your experience. Cheers. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. I think that I'm going to hide in Somewhere by a gated star Baby, they ain't never gonna find me I'm a renegade oh. I could be the one who saved you from this Hey everyone, good to see you again. If you haven't met before, then hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And next year I'll be studying for a PhD in nutritional science. I do plant-based nutrition videos every single day in which I answer your health questions under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below, or alternatively, you can send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. So as you saw, today's question comes from ex-vegan YouTuber Raw Within. Now, I first heard of him a few months back when quite a few vegan YouTubers started a bit of a witch hunt against him when he stopped being vegan because of gut issues. Now, I personally never watched his video when he described why he stopped being vegan or those made by vegans criticizing him. So let's just recap. This is what Raw Within said at the time about why he was no longer vegan. This is proving quite a difficult video to film because I just don't know how to say all the stuff that I'm trying to put across, but let's try it. A few years ago, I learned about veganism. I saw, you know, some of the videos about what animals go through and it made me cry and very angry. And straight away I said, right, from this point, I'm not gonna eat any animal products or meat again. And after a month, I got worried and I, I sort of stopped, but I never fully went back. A year ago, I decided again that I would go for it fully. And I should say the reason I stopped before was because I've had some health issues for a long time and I have to be very careful about what I eat. I don't care about missing out on meat or cheese. I couldn't give a fuck. Now, last night, I thought I would also catch up on a few of the vegan response videos towards him. And to be fair, I was a bit shocked and repulsed by a number of the responses that I saw. So here we have a person with gut issues and other health problems that were severely impacting on his quality of life and who was battling quite severe depression. And it appears a good few vegans just charged in straight after him with absolutely no comprehension of what they were talking about or any understanding of health or nutrition. And to be fair, it's fucking disgusting. Now, some of you could say, well, Goji Man, you did the exactly the same thing with Vegetable Police, but here is the big difference. So my health was so badly in the gutter and to a much worse extent than Vegetable Police. I couldn't eat anything and was reacting to everything. So number one, I knew exactly what he was going through. Secondly, I knew how Vegetable Police could fix his issues and I tried helping him and giving him some information. I didn't just make an attack video about him attacking his choice to go carnivore or attacking him personally. 
I made a video directly to Vegetable Police simply saying that I had the same issues as him and he could fix these issues by doing X, Y and Z. Now in contrast, the videos I saw about Raw Within were personal and by people who do not even have a basic level of understanding of gut function, health or nutrition. They were simply making videos for a few quick views. Now at my lowest when I couldn't eat and I couldn't get out of bed for basically 12 months and I was going through that mindset of maybe considering meat because I needed to get some nutrition into my body, the thought of scummy little vegan keyboard warriors having a pop at me or someone else in that situation, well it fucking repulses me. When your gut fails, it will put you on your ass quicker than anything. You can end up in a situation where you can't eat, you get massive digestive issues, you can get arrhythmia issues, severe depression, and many other problems that will make you wish you were dead. So the first point that I want to make in this video before I directly respond to Raw Within's questions, if you are a vegan YouTuber with no understanding of gut health or nutrition, or you've never had health that has severely failed, well then quite frankly, shut the fuck up. As the saying goes, always be the vegan that you would have wanted to have met before you went vegan yourself. And if you are triggered by someone who has health problems and that little nagging vegan comes racing to the surface, then bite your fucking tongue. All this guy knew was that his gut was trashed, he couldn't eat many fruits and vegetables, and when he did, his health would go into the gutter. Now just to give this some perspective, two days ago Raw Within made this video. Now all those fuckers who criticised him before, just have a listen to where this guy is at. So enough is enough. It is. Enough is too much. On a serious level I'm so sick of my life right now. I'm so sick of being depressed and anxious every day. And dealing with health problems, most of which are caused by anxiety and stress, your body just becomes broken after a while and it's very hard and very slow to recover from anxiety, particularly when the big sources of stress in your life are continuing and then you're like, I need to change this, but I don't know how. It's too big to change, like, and I can't be specific, but all I'm saying is I feel like I'm going completely against who I am every single day. I feel like I have so many regrets. <sighs> I've been listening to these uh, Skype calls on a website called Anxiety Center, which I registered to about a year ago. And they're sort of group therapy calls of other people with anxiety, and the whole website is about recovering from anxiety, particularly for long-term sufferers who have all these weird symptoms, and then you start worrying about your health and what's wrong with you when really... Most of the time what's wrong is that your nervous system is kind of fucked up and it takes a very long time for it to get calm again. You know, if you're putting in the work and you're relaxing and you're learning to kind of just deal with your fucked up symptoms, then your nervous system can calm down. But most people, like me, end up confused and fighting all the time and sort of perfectionism and people pleasing, that kind of stuff will keep you held back. And I've just run myself to the ground and I know I've done it to myself, but I don't know how to stop and I don't know how to turn this around. And the fact that this is down to me to fix scares the shit out of me. <sighs> I just want someone to look forward to right now, apart from dying. I hope you all feel so much better in your lives with one foot on this guy's head you absolute bunch of dickheads. No wonder why veganism has such a shitty name at times. Now the reason why I love Raw Within after watching a couple of his videos is that clearly he is a compassionate person at heart. He doesn't want to be eating animals but he doesn't know a way out of the mess that he finds himself in. And even in that situation when he doesn't have the answers, he keeps digging. So he keeps digging until he learns about SIBO and then he gets tested. So I asked him to send me over his test results and this is what they look like. So a positive test result for methane dominant SIBO. And this is probably one of the leading causes of him not being able to maintain a vegan diet. So all of the vegans who criticized him, just sit back and have a think about this because he has an underlying gut problem that makes it difficult to eat the diet that you criticized him for not eating. 
So what I want to do now is answer the questions he asked in his video and explain what all of this means. Not to get one up on the paleo or carnivore people, not to get more views and certainly not to get raw within converted back to being vegan, but because it's simply the right fucking thing to do. Now the first thing that I would say is that you probably shouldn't jump into treatment straight away. Now when you first get a diagnosis after having health issues, the first thing that you want to do is to cling to that and run with it. Because when you have been ill for a while, you just want that over and done with, and I get that. But with gut issues, it's never that straightforward. So yes, you have SIBO, and that is a big piece of the jigsaw, but what is driving the SIBO and what is driving your stomach pains? So Raw Within did also send me a stool test result of his from a couple of years ago, but I think it's really important to test this again in conjunction with an organic acids test. This will show how his gut is breaking down the food, whether candida is also there, and what other issues, if any, are present. Now, as you all know, I recently did a crowdfund for Wavy Carbs and his testing. Now, I think these tests will work out a lot cheaper than I initially thought with him being in the States, so what I would like to do is to use the remainder of the money for Raw Within and to top up this if needed with money from my Patreon account. And if okay with him, I will share his results on here and also on his channel. By getting Raw Within to do a new stool test and also an organic acids test, it will give me a fuller picture of what's going on in his body, what gut issues are driving his SIBO, and then more importantly, how we then start backing up out of the situation that he finds himself in. So let me know in the comments below if you donated money for the wavy carbs testing and whether you are okay with this. So let's quickly respond to the rest of his questions. So in response to supplements, there are various types of bacteria and what's called archaea that drive methane dominant SIBO and not all antimicrobials kill all types of bacteria and archaea. Raw within SIBO numbers are also quite high. So me personally, I would take the following approach but only when I have his organic acids tests and stool test results back and I know the full picture. So first I would take both Alimed, which is derived from garlic and is a very strong antifungal, and also oregano oil for a period of four weeks. So the berberine that you talked about in your question is actually more effective in cases of hydrogen SIBO, so that's why I would swap this out for the Alimed. You also want to take a good quality comprehensive digestive enzyme, one to help you break down the food better and stopping undigested food hitting your small intestines, and two, in over three quarters of methane SIBO cases, biofilms are present. Now this simply means that the antimicrobials and antibiotics, if you go down that route, can't get to the bacteria and archaea as they are protected by that layer of biofilm. So the digestive enzymes will eat through the biofilm, allowing the antimicrobials or antibiotics to do their job. So do all of this for four weeks and then take two weeks off and retest to see where your SIBO numbers are at. At the same time as this kill off phase, dietary modifications should be made with, the, with either the low FODMAP or SCD diet, depending on which is best suited to you. Now the reason that you want your organic acid test results back before starting treatment is that you need to know whether you have oxalate and salicylate type issues because if you do the oregano will need to be swapped out otherwise you will have reactions to this and it will make you feel like crap. You also need to know whether your gut is breaking down the fats properly and if not you need to add in some beet extract powder supplements which will increase your bile production. Now once you have done the initial kill phase for four weeks and you've killed off the SIBO, you then need to work on healing the gut and protecting yourself from relapse. So you will continue on the maintenance diet and then add in fermented foods or pre or probiotic supplements. Me personally, I would always opt for fermented foods. And finally, the final phase is the recovery phase where you continue with the fermented foods and then gradually add in new fruits and vegetables week by week. So this is the approach that I followed after stool testing and doing organic acids tests to see what other gut issues I had at play. And I've had no relapse in nearly 18 months. So in terms of making things worse, if you do nothing, then your SIBO will likely transition eventually into autoimmune type issues. So then your health will really start spiraling out of control. So what I am saying is that if you are methodical in your approach, and you look at the stool test results and organic acid test results, and you don't just treat the SIBO based on your SIBO numbers, 
then relapse rates are dramatically lower. So in terms of making things worse, there may very well be a period of seven to 10 days when killing everything off that you get die off type symptoms and a worsening of your anxiety. This will be very short lived. And after this, you will see improvements week by week. Now there are two other options for you that I will throw out there. Number one, pharmaceutical antibiotics. Now the common antibiotic used to kill off SIBO is rifaximin. It only works in the gut and doesn't go into the bloodstream, so side effects will be a lot less, but relapse rates tend to be a lot higher. The other option is a two week elemental type diet where you drink only elemental formula to kill off the bacteria. Again, relapse rates tend to be higher, so I personally don't recommend this. Now you will probably hear the carnivore dieters say, well, look how complicated all of that sounds. Just go meat only. The problem with this approach is that you won't kill off the SIBO. Methane and sulfur based bacteria will still ferment in the absence of carbs. So essentially they will feed off the protein and fat in your diet. So yes, you will absolutely get a reduction in your symptoms using the carnivore dietary approach, but the underlying gut infection will always be there and it will eventually get worse. Now I know I keep using the vegetable police example, but he feels a lot better eating meat, but every time he tries eating fruits and vegetables, he has another reaction. This is simply because his underlying gut issues are still there, despite no carbs for a number of months. Now I hope this video helps you in some small way, buddy. Um, I know it sounds slightly complicated and overwhelming, particularly when you feel as crap as you probably do now, but it's actually very straightforward. And if you concentrate on fixing the issues properly now and you get your health back on track, you can then start enjoying all of those foods again and finally get rid of that depression and anxiety. And if everyone is okay with me funding your test for the organic acids and stool test, I will interpret these in conjunction with your SIBO results and help you fix all of these underlying problems. You are in a shit place now, but in a few months time, this will all be a distant nightmare and you will have forgotten all about it. So that's the end of today's video. I hope it really helped. As always, if you have a question for me, then hashtag AskGojiMan in the comments below. Alternatively, you can send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. And as always, remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you.